All right. Yes. This is it. Oh, we're on. We're okay. doing an, another history podcast. This time we've got the Colin Quinn. Yes. And today's topic is Vietnam. Vietnam. What a yeah. time. Yeah. What a crazy time. <laughs> hey. I mean, in some ways, I feel like it's the most important. It, it changed everything. Plus, it was at that time, you know? Yeah. But it changed. I always feel like these things have like bigger, like what comes first? Vietnam makes people, it, was it a revolution where everybody's like, we're fighting against the system or is Vietnam the thing that triggers it off? And it's, to, would it have happened without Vietnam? Would the 60s have happened without Vietnam? Yeah. Because Vietnam, as you know, I, I'm breaking about my extensive knowledge, started for America in the 40s. Yeah. And yeah. And it was um, because we were helping France, because we owed France from the Revolutionary War. We yeah, I was the, the thing I've looked at it, dude. France dragged us into this to the point I that's no like, idea. oh, France was France owned Vietnam. Mm -hmm. It was a colony. Japan took it when they went. They got a little wild. Yeah, yeah. And then the United States liberated it. Okay. And the, that was the thing. Ho Chi Minh, the guy who ended up being the leader of the Viet Cong, was like, I love America. That's he was right. Like, he was right. right. He was writing letters to Truman, That's saying right. like, "I love you, thank you." They were like, "Americans are the only free people on earth. Yes. These are incredible people." The leader of them yeah, loved yeah. America. Yeah. And then he started. This is the craziest part. So France goes back in after the war and is like, "We're taking it back," and America was like, mm -hmm. "Don't do that." Yeah. And we we were kind of siding with Ho Chi Minh and mm. and the Vietnamese. And then France was like, this is the beginning of the Cold War. So France is like, hey, if you guys don't support us, maybe we'll start listening to from Russia. And then America was like, all right, we'll can help you out. Damn. Anyway. That is interesting. And by the way, speaking of Ho Chi Minh, writing letters to Truman, all those letters were redacted and like, yeah. to like 1970-something. Uh, and half of them Truman never got because the Secret Service was like, wow, he doesn't need to that. see these. Yeah. Yeah, making those decisions. Everybody made, but that's the whole thing about Vietnam too. Everybody's making their own decisions, determining. So the the when you have power, you know, when you disperse power in that way, everybody goes, "I'll take this part," and they're all just like, <laughs> and yeah, and because of the Cold War, the Secret Service and the CIA mm -hmm. were like, "This is more important." Like the CIA versus the KGB in Russia yeah, yeah. and the Soviet Union, that became the two superpowers. Yeah. yeah, and they were doing stuff like undermining the president to be like the war against Russia is more. I mean, it was, it's, it's. I I don't like Vietnam because but, of how frustrating and stupid it is. Well, but first of all, the CIA. When you think about it, their whole thing was the Cold War first. So all the drug dealing that happened in the seventies and eighties was again through from every cartel. The CIA when they like okay CIA they would stop the DEA from doing their job yeah. all the time. Because they're like, the Cold War, these are anti-communists, but they're the heads of the cartels, yeah, yeah. but they're anti-communists, and that was their priority. So they they made that choice, and I'm sure the president didn't want to make the choice, whoever it was, during yeah. all those times. But that was the choice they always made. Damn, then they did the Just Say No like 10 years later. Like, come on, guys, don't do drugs. That's just Say No, but yeah, even yeah, yeah. Just Say No, so they were still telling the DEA back. Vietnam, the French. The French? the French are fucking dickheads. Dude. Brutal. They were dickheads. So they dragged us in. They, we were, they we absolutely were, dragged us in. Well, the letters. they dragged us in, but we wanted into. I mean, we, we could have left. We could have left 10. We could have left. I mean, if you, I read this book, A Bright Shining Light. I just happened to be reading it. By the way, whenever you read a book, it was especially a Kindle, try to find out how many pages it is first. Oh, yeah. This book's 800 pages. <laughs> Fuck. So I was reading it like, oh, this is A Bright Shining Light. It doesn't sound yeah. like a long book. Yeah. It's the history of everything. But uh, but France, they left. We helped them. So there was one that would turn Ho Chi Minh. One of the things that turned him is we decided we supplied France with all these um all the mortars and everything where they destroyed a lot of it in Vietnam, and that turned yeah uh them against America too. Oh, Ho yeah. Chi Minh, yeah. yeah it, it was uh there was a battle. I forget the name of it. So I was just Dien watching the Ken Burns on it. What is it? Dien Bien Phu. Yes. So the French. We're kind of fucking up the Vietnamese. Mm -hmm. I mean, they had it was the same as us versus them. They had yeah. superior firepower, but again, just like time and time again, the Vietnamese were very good at guerrilla warfare because we trained them during World War II. Oh yeah, yeah, a little you know mujahideen type shit. Yeah, and 
they were about to come to talks, France and Vietnam. They were about to come to the table. Before they went to have talks, they both tried to get one more offensive in. So they had leverage when they went to talks. Nice. So France sets up at, what's it, Bien Den? Bien Bien Fieu, yeah. They just put themselves at the bottom of this valley. And they're like, we're just going to build an airfield here. We're going to fuck them up. One of the French generals was like, I have too many guns. We're going to fuck these dudes up. Damn. And the Vietnamese surrounded them in this valley and just destroyed them. The French guy, the general that led that, killed himself honorably because he was like, we're going to wipe the floor with these guys. Why are they he, going to valley? Isn't that a bad? I'm not a military was, tactician, yeah, but isn't that like call. not the good idea? Yeah, it was a bad idea. Well, it's funny you say that because even Quezon, the famous uh, 19, 14 years later, America did the same thing. Set themselves up in a, in, was surrounded by all the mountains. So created a valley and set up an airstrip, a landing strip <laughs> in the valley and got killed because of it. Damn. I mean, it's really amazing. I mean, that, yeah. the other thing about Vietnam is you realize how, like, how, you know, you always think when you're young, at least, like the people in charge, they spend all their time doing this. They know what they're doing. But there were so many egos involved that mm. the few people were like, this is not working. We're just, they were just like, stop yeah you don't know what you're saying just because of ego people think oh their Damn. motive was they wanted money they would still get the money this was about like something else a power struggle that where you pay the price or the troops pay the price oh it sucks yeah if you're just some dude sitting in a village and some guy had an argument and you're just getting blown up and you're like what's this about <laughs> oh and the other <laughs> thing that some guy was, couldn't uh, come to grips with it he was like no i'm right <laughs> in the early 60s they had this hamlet program where they would bring they said we're going to bring all these weapons to each hamlet all these little hamlets because it was kind of half and half like north korea mm. and they brought all these weapons to all these hamlets and said look you're in charge of the weapons and it was all american made modern stuff and of course the Viet Cong, who kind of controlled more or less they had the hearts of the people they took all the weapons so we supplied the Viet Cong with all these weapons <laughs> in the early 60s and it kept them going it genuinely makes me like I, all my information's from the Ken Burns documentary, right? And I watch it, and every time I'm watching it, I by episode two, I'm like, "What is going?" Like it's yeah, it doesn't make sense. Well, I don't know if this was in the Ken Burns documentary, but did you see the guy? It is, I think it is. I saw the Ken Burns. He's Beckwith, with the guy and the an advisor, Colonel Beckwith. Oh yeah, charging Charlie Beckwith, and he goes, they interview him, and he go. Uh, what do you think of the Viet Cong? He goes, finest soldier I've ever seen. This is a 1960. He goes, what? The Viet Cong. He goes, best soldier I've ever seen. I wish I had 200 of them under my command. And right away, you're like, oh, we should have realized yeah. something was up then. Well, they also, they'd been fighting for 30 years. Mm -hmm. These dudes have been fighting since like World War II. They didn't stop fighting. Really? From World War II until the end of Vietnam, they were fighting constantly. And their home territory. Yeah. And they're so small, they had to be crafty. They all the tunnels, all the trails. They know everything. Oh fuck! Yeah. Was that the first American war where like the American troops were like, "Look, what's the point of yeah. this?" The first I think time Korea. Like, I'm sure they were a little bit like actually. Yeah, Korea. Korea. We did. We MacArthur yeah. screwed up Korea. Yeah. MacArthur. Everybody was like, "Don't do this." MacArthur's like, "I love the people loved him." Yeah. The Korean people were like this guy's our savior, and they. And he just was like a king over there. Yeah. And then he just said, we're going to do it this way. I forget. He landed on the coast. So he did something that was strategically a nightmare. And even his generals are like, don't do this. What are you doing? And he goes, I know what I'm doing. And <laughs> yeah, that guy, he had an ego, dude. That stinks. He referred to himself in the third person. Did he? he? Was fucking yeah. nuts. Yeah, he was wild. MacArthur was wild. Sucks. He might get a bad rap, though. I kind of like him. Yeah, no, he was beloved. Look, yeah. the people loved him because he... Japan loved it because after World War II, they were expecting, because they were so uh, horrendous during World War II, they expected him to really bear down. And he treated them like, he said, you treat these people like human beings. So Japanese. Japanese people treat him like a god. So he felt like a god. That's tough to shake off. That would get me. Yeah. If I was getting like samurai glory, I'd be like, yeah, you know what? Yeah, sure. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Even if like I, presenting you sword. Those yeah, cool I suits. I am, if yeah. I had to wear one of those cool suits, I'd be like, who do I? I'll slash I think away. that's why God never even let me sell out like the beacon or something like that. <laughs> he keeps me at a level of three to 400 seats yeah. on the road. And there's a reason for it. <laughs> oh, man. So, the, yeah, what was it? So chronologically, the French direct. So we were like. Boys so it was a them. French colony. Then there's World War II. Yeah. Japan takes over. And. And like always, when Japan would invade, 
every all the Asian countries were like, nice, finally the white colon, colonists are gone. Yeah. We're going to get treated well. And they immediately get starved to death and yeah. beheaded and fucked with. It sucks. So then when the Americans liberated Vietnam and the British, whoever, they were like, we love America. And then France after World War II, who just got their ass whooped. Yeah, yeah. They're like, actually, we want those colonies back. <laughs> nice. Yeah. And Vietnam was like, no. This is ours now. Yeah. We're independent again. So then. Do they have to write a letter to Vietnam like, hey, buddy. Uh, we're coming back. Bad news. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Sorry. We'll, we should start chronologically. Yeah. Let you. I'll, what, all you? I watch is Ken Burns. What? Oh, what are we talking about? Well, I yeah, don't know. Whatever you want. What you said. And then. <laughs> so then France, when they lost, you know what I mean? The Geneva uh, talks. Geneva. I think it was the first Geneva talk back then. Maybe not. But then. That was the best one. Was that probably that was the best, the best one? one. First, we were like, "Hey, I like Jenny," you know. And um, and then um, we went in. Eisenhower said, "We're just going to arm them in the fifties." You know, we're just going to keep arming them because we don't want communism to spread down there. And then, because uh, China, they were worried about China taking over Vietnam, but Vietnam wasn't worried because they were half communist. Like he said, by that point, Ho Chi Minh was pro-American until that horrible event where the France destroyed like all these innocent villages, and then. He turned on America because we supplied France. They we, didn't have, in, fair enough. In Bien Den Phu. Bien Bien Phu is when they got cocky. America yeah. started supplying France because mm -hmm. the only way the French could get anything was airdrops. Yeah. Because they were in a valley getting destroyed. Like 8,000 French dudes died. Jesus. Uh, again, though, the Vietnamese lost like three to one casualties, but they were like, that's a victory. Yeah. That's they were getting wiped out constantly. Yeah. that was, What was that one quote? Like, all we have to do is just stay here. And just die. I mean, yeah, that was the one. The one of the uh, Vietnamese soldiers like all we have to do is just not become extinct and we win. And I was like, that's great. Yeah, that's tough. Well, that's, that's the problem with everything, right? I mean, anytime you go anywhere, the people that live there, they they have nowhere to go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so they're like, well, I'm, I, I, you know, you trap a, a trap rat is going to fight to the death. Yeah, but so then um, yeah, it got to the point where in the they're talking about like the United States was literally funding eighty percent of the French versus Vietnamese war. We were giving France 80% of the budget Damn. to win the war. Yeah. Yeah. France sucks. France did a bad job and then they left and then we decided it was such a, it's such a weird, I look at it so like psychologically, like what I understand about the comment, the domino theory was part of it, but yeah. the psychological uh, mindset you put yourself into, the, there was this guy Harkins, the general, he was the guy that ran it and he was the war, he is really responsible in many ways because we go back and tell the president and these guys, it's going good. But even then, <laughs> the presidents, the ambassadors, they all went along. It just goes to show. I mean, I quote my mother all the time. I rest us all. But she used to always say, people, and I see this deeper and deeper in everything, and this is a perfect example. People are attracted to bullshit. And if you offer them something that's quality or truthful and bullshit, they go for the bullshit every time. And I said to my mother at the time, I go, that's true most of the time. She goes, I didn't say most of the time. I said every time. And Vietnam's a perfect example because he was this guy, Van. This whole book, Bright Shine Lies, about this guy, Van. It was a, in Vietnam. For, he was the early guy. And he's like, look, we're going to lose. Here's what's happening. The Hamlets, we're giving away our guns. The communists are taking. We're bombing village. We were searching and destroy in 1963. Jesus. And he goes, we're, we're losing everybody. We got to either win them over through like social revolution, the corruption of, of the South Vietnamese. They're taking everything. Their special forces that we trained are destroying people. This is terrible. We're losing. And everybody, even the people that kind of knew better, just went like, oh. And then somebody was like, no, we're just going to do this. And they're like, okay, let's do that. And it yeah. wasn't that it was easier. And they almost like will themselves into like, if you ever been involved in like a, TV or movie project, right? And everyone's sitting there and you start out going, it's got to be this. And then slowly you start to go, oh yeah, no that. And then somebody that wasn't involved in the first month walks in and goes, are you guys all gone crazy? And yes, you have. <laughs> and no that's one wants what to say like, it sucks. They're like, no, this is good. <laughs> you start to believe it. <laughs> yeah. You get in this stupor. And that's what I think happened in Vietnam. With the, our military I mean, and all. You know? You're on the set of Aquaman Six, and you're like, "This still is good. This, this is, is this might <laughs> be yes. the best picture." And you ever go to a screening of a movie? No. And then I've gone to screenings of movies, mm. and you'll sit there and be like, "That movie was really good." If you're around the movie, sure, and you, yeah. you know the cast, you know for yeah, the people, yeah, yeah. You're like, it was good. It was bad. And then if I've been with people that go, "Are you crazy? That was shit." <laughs> and then later I'm like, "I was in a state of temporary insanity," and I feel like that's what happened. Oh. 
For also, the, the domino effect bothers me. It just annoys me. You don't like, like dominoes? I, obviously, <laughs> you I, don't like, obviously, I crush dominoes. No, you don't. <laughs> I'll tell you what you don't like. You don't like that uh, slippery slope theory. That's basically the domino effect, yeah. right? I agree. I don't when like it, it When it comes to well, why we were in Vietnam, yeah. was they were like, well, if, if China's influence and the Soviet influence gets Vietnam, they're going to get all of Southeast Asia. Yeah. And it's like, so? Well, but at the time, Russia had just taken all of Eastern Europe in the early 50s. So in the grand scheme of things, considering how people felt at that time. I know they were scared of it, but it's. I mean, it wasn't like just some crazy. It was like, wait. They just took Czechoslovakia, Hungary, all these yeah, places. Yeah, yeah, They're moving. Everybody in Europe is on the same page. Everybody's like post World War II, and they're like, "Oh, they're gonna move." Because everybody knew, even in World War II, remember what Patton? Patton was like, "We should go right into Russia." Yeah. Patton, by the way, a, a, an enemy of my family. Really. I, one of my uncles was uh, 19 years old, World War II, captured by the Germans, POW camp for a year. German POW camp. 90 pounds, he's 19 years old, maybe he's 20 by now. He's in the uh, hospital when they finally release him. Patton's visiting all the wounded troops. Then he gets to the POWs. They go, do you want to, these are all the POWs. He goes, I don't talk to cowards. <gasps> Patton says, he goes, I don't talk to cowards. You're supposed to die with your unit. I don't believe in POWs. So my uncle hated Patton. Every, <laughs> every family gets together. People like, especially when the movie Patton came out, it was like, hey, George, you're going to go see the Patton movie? And he's like, his name was George too. And he's like, ah, I beat it. You know? <laughs> Damn, he went and just snubbed the POWs? He he literally goes, cow, he called them cowards. Yeah. Oh, my uncle's like 90 pounds. He's 19, 20 years old. I mean, like, one of the opening scenes oh. in Patton is when he's slapping a guy in the hospital. Oh, yeah. He's that's slapping right. him, calling him a fucking the coward PTSD, in the that's hospital. Right. That's right. The PTSD yeah. guy. All right. Yeah, that's... What a jerk. So, yeah, where are we at? We're saying, we gotta, we're saying that you don't believe in the domino theory. Yeah. I mean, I, I understand at the time there's, you know, there's a hysteria. It's the same reason we went into Iraq. We were like, yeah. They're trying to kill us. They hate our right. freedom. Right. They do. And after 15, 20 years, we're like, what was that? Right. There was no weapons. Yeah. And then, yeah, once, what, I don't know. Well, I've, I remember that George, remember the book I was talking about, the George Friedman book, where it was the next 100 years and they predicted all that stuff? Remember like two weeks before Russia invaded Ukraine? Yeah. The, he was saying that U.S. is so far and ahead of everybody, like economically, militarily, that all they're trying to do is break up every alliance that forms. Yeah. So it's like, they don't, it does, it's not about winning wars, it's about just to stabilize. But at this point, Russia was they were gaining they creating. were they were pretty powerful they just got the nuke yeah now all of a sudden but it he, was by the way to that end I think it was Ellsberg the guy with the Pentagon Papers which was a big thing but when it, one of these guys was looking at the Russia thing in 1960 he was working with a nuclear nuclear and it, he said it was shocking because it were like Russia knew they were nowhere in the same ballpark with us they had nothing compared to us really? And the military just had this, you know, narrative in their head, like Russia and us. And they were just child's play compared to us at the, at the time, you know, 58, 59, something like that. I think that was Ellsberg, Pentagon Papers, but I'm not sure. But some something like that. But yeah, that was the other side of it. Damn, so so even that was again, bullshit. <laughs> but they did take all those countries. I mean, that was yeah, real. Yeah, you know? but all those countries are- Well, they, were they shit Eastern because Europe of and that, Southeast though? Asia. But were, they, <laughs> but were they shit then or were they- Because of- because people say the same thing about any uh, any colony, you know? Yeah, like you're talking like Macedonia, Bulgaria. And how important, but this brings up the question BC. about capitalism versus communism. How important is free will? That's the question. So I don't know. You know what I mean? I mean, that's what this whole thing is about, right? Yeah. Yeah, or I, I think it's human organization schemes. Aren't there people at the top of communism who live like very well and kind of rule still anyway? Yeah, that's what happens. Yeah. Yeah, so I think it's just kind of like a... Which one do you want, peasants? It's like you get to compete and have fun, or it's like, or you share. And it's you know, right? Yeah, but I mean, obviously, I, we, I mean, I'll I like capitalism. Communism. I like the Don't idea of capitalism. <laughs> the what? Capitalism. I mean, obviously, we it's when it's unfettered, it's not going to work. But the idea of capitalism, I like because it f appeals to human nature's greedy side, which mm. I feel like anytime you appeal to people based on something that's not so innocent, that's probably the healthy way to go. Because that's how people's nature is. It's not repressed. But if it goes too, obviously you can't have people just you know doing whatever they want. That's a yeah. problem. Just yeah, going I mean, so into space. <laughs> was that yeah? Just like guys just launching crazy. themselves into space. I mean, the results are in. So far, it's one in terms Capitalism? of like remaining a thing in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's one. It's one. And yeah, it's winning. And currently. communism has to try harder to keep people from giving their opinion. So that means it's not a good system. That's true. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, it doesn't work very well. Either. We're we're, sli- we're we're getting we're dancing with that a little bit. Yeah, not being able to say stuff. So oh, absolutely. We'll see. Maybe that'll go well. Who knows? Maybe the whole thing will just collapse and we'll all fucking die. I said it was a it was a weird narcotic state where we you know it's been kind of a thing after World War II. It's gone now, but where we're like, no, we don't really we don't really fail. Everybody wants to do. Everybody wants this because it worked so well. Not just World War II. The Marshall Plan even worked because we're dealing with all these countries and suddenly they're coming back. By 1960s, 50s, Germany's even back. So we're like the benign guys that we control things. At, but everybody's kind of like getting their thing. Who yeah. wants to be on the team? Mm. And then, you know, we didn't realize it was a whole undercurrent. So like the overcurrent is Europe. Then the undercurrent is the colonies. So all the colonies were yeah. belly starting in the late 50s. Oh, yeah. From Africa to, you know, South America. And um, yeah, so there was that whole thing going on, you know. The vacay so, spots were probably. There was so off. much going yeah. on, isn't it weird? All the sandals. <laughs> the sandals resorts. All the sandals resorts yeah. were, they've had it up to here. Yeah. That makes so sense. So it was kind of a weird, uh, it was an interesting time. I can really see thinking. communism appealing to that. Yeah. You're down Oh, Cuba. Look at Cuba with the whole mafia thing. And you know, it was such an yeah. interesting thing where it was like, you know, they letting all these capitalist things, and then they were like, no. And Castro came in, and you know what I mean? They, even though Cuba failed, they didn't like the corruption level that was going on. The same thing with South Vietnam. Yeah. We that was like, the thing. We propped up some dumbass. We propped up a dumbass. And and we would never get rid of it. And then as soon as you saw that part, we were watching mm. it. Yeah. We propped up this dude who just immediately started persecuting the Buddhists. Absolutely. Started. Yep. His wife was a yeah. monster who was like, good, I'm glad they're burning themselves. Yes. His wife I mean, and his was, brother. Yeah. They were just morons. Yeah. Yes. And we couldn't back off because we, we were like, it's still better than communism. Yep. Yeah. Meanwhile, Ho Chi Minh was kind of cool. Right. He liked us at the beginning. Yeah. He, was, he, was he wasn't like, totally into this thing. And then yeah. He, yeah. yeah. It's tough. It's like but assistant. he became, yeah. Yeah. It's like yeah. assistant manager. Now, manager. Did you know a lot of guys that were in Vietnam? I knew a few. Yeah. yeah. I was a kid. I was a kid doing the whole thing, you know? Yeah. And I remember as a little kid, you'd watch, it was on the news every, every day at five and six o'clock, you'd see the footage from Vietnam. So it was like such a part. It wasn't like I was shocked because I wasn't from the generation before that. That was all I knew. I was seven, yeah. eight years old, nine years old. But I remember seeing footage of Vietnam all the time on TV and the news. And it was just a constant thing. And I remember one time in class, we were talking about Vietnam. This is probably 71, or maybe 70. And the teacher or the kids were going, yeah, Vietnam is bad. And this girl in our class starts screaming and crying because her brother got killed in Vietnam. So I knew, I knew probably three guys... Older guys they didn't hang out with me, but I mean, yeah. I knew three guys that were Marines in Vietnam that got wounded, that came home, and they all had those cliche uh, Marine personalities. I mean, uh, Vietnam vet personality, yeah. the army jacket by themselves, the big beards when they're home, heavy drinker, Damn. heavy smoker, you know, prone to outbursts, but still good guys. Like they were guys yeah. we like, you know, they weren't like. People hung out with them and talked to them, but they had that other side to them, partly from being in the war, partly from what they did, partly from what Vietnam did, and partly from their reaction when they came home. Yeah. It wasn't like you walk around, people weren't going, thank you for your service either, you know? Yikes. Yeah, yeah. That's thanks. Yeah, so I knew a few guys, yeah. Yeah, that was the thing we were talking about. O'Connor brought this up. We were mm-hmm. talking about last night. He's like, imagine, so imagine today's college student. <laughs> imagine Jesus being Christ. a dude who got drafted yeah and had to go live through hell and then you get home and one of these fuckers throws like a bag of piss at you and is like baby killer yeah right oh my god that that's was... when i would join the ohio national guard and hit, <laughs> yeah. i would head down to kent state and say fuck you guys yeah true um, that's 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 uh, yeah but it but it was interesting that they all did have that personality yeah even the guys i knew guy across through my friend's brother was a vietnam vet that didn't fight he was a uh, airplane mechanic and even he was screwed Fuck. up yeah my Jesus. uncle my uncle was a marine and he never talks about it wow. ever like literally never talks about it. one night he and i got drunk and he opened up about it really and wow. he was it was wild he saw a fucking chinook get hit and just spun and oh. dude, dudes flew everywhere i mean it was now my other uncle was in vietnam and he is a little more i don't he's a little more sociopath like psycho that's yeah. like mm. i killed a guy yeah and i was like how was that 
And it was just me and him. And he goes, it's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yo, <laughs> yo. I told you, I knew a guy who was a sniper and he was saying, yeah. You, he's like you get addicted to the feeling of killing people and he was like he was a nice dude he's like i didn't have any i didn't have like ill will towards people yeah. but he's like i you i like would watch people eat dinner and as, as soon as they finish pff, right in the head he's like well, by like the 12th stuff. one he's like you get like a god complex and you're like i'm ending this god is done. Damn. yeah so you just my watch uncle, people my, hang out the guy in vietnam I th- i've told you this before it was it was like a 90 degree trail and you couldn't see around the corner so he's walking one way a Viet Cong was walking up the path he said they literally bumped into each other in the jungle and then it was just a race to see who could get wow. their pistol, who could get their gun out faster, and he got his out. Woo! Jesus first. Christ! Now don't get he's still. I mean, and then he got he got hit with a he got hit with a rocket propelled grenade, and he blew. He has his nipples missing, his calves what? off. Oh. Yeah, and he had to lay there because they're in the middle of a firefight. He had to lay there for three hours on the jungle floor, like I'm dead, I'm dying for oh, sure. Yeah. I mean, he's yeah, he's a hero. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, Fuck. and is it that different from war? Like, my father was in Korea and mm. Korean and uh, war, and he said the most disturbing part was, which is still chilling, that the lieutenants or the officers would nightly bring in the Korean prisoners and beat the living shit out of them. And always like, hey, Brooklyn, you want a piece? And he's yeah. like, no, thanks. And they would just like beat the, just torture the guys, just beat uh. them for fun. So it was already starting to lose the, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. The and glamour then, of World War Two, and then but but Vietnam is a different like I feel like they this this setup even though it happened in World War Two it happens in every war the setup of search and destroy is what fucked them all up because here you are you grow up in the fifties you're watching these movies you have a little bit even if you're not innocent you know you know you're capable of but you still and then suddenly you're in the middle of this thing where they go no you have to burn all these hamlets because like I said the Hamlet program the Vietnamese took over the hamlets so they go and the vietnamese are in there and whether they are or not they're in enough where you're like okay it's them and me and so you're torturing all these peasants out of their house torture it torching their it village burning their that's like the that's yeah. the strategy the, how long do that's they do our that for? strategy how long do they do the that whole for? time the whole entire, the whole from they 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 burn down. yeah from 1963 and they said even that's what maury smally safer was uh the fan, you know the guy from 60 minutes I always thought that was an annoying guy, you know. But meanwhile, he was a reporter, and he had the. They filmed in 1965, torching of a Hamlet, 1965, early in the war, and that's when everyone started protesting the Vietnam yeah. War because they watched on TV. They're like, "Wait, this is like liberating France. What's going on here?" It was just all these peasants running. They're torching the house and shooting the pigs. Like that was on the yeah. national news on Fuck the evening Christ. news. That's what you were watching. Well, I don't remember that, but I'm saying. But people yeah, yeah. shocked the whole country. That's when the protest began. Because we were the good guys. We were always the good guys. We were always the good guys. Like, really check good. us out. Never like boo. Or like, no, the news was like, hey, this is crazy. That's because the news was doing their job. True. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, here's yes. what's actually <laughs> happening. No, right. They just shot. And Molly Safer had to leave. Like they were threatening him because they were saying he took it out of context. He didn't, which he probably <laughs> he took did. It took it out of context. Well, I'm saying <laughs> yeah. they weren't saying that they'd been getting shot. Like Marines had gotten shot. From that village. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah. I'm saying it wasn't like, you know, but I mean, but no, they still, were bad. it was a stupid strategy. You but see, this is what happened. And, yeah. and it was crazy because the French had just done it before us. Yes. Mm-hmm. So they, they did this thing called pacification where they were like, right. we're going to, they tried to do the social set. Like they were like, we're going to help build your rice paddies up. We're going to give you food. We're going to build schools. And during the day, it worked. Mm-hmm. And then at night, the Viet Cong would come in. Yeah. Take the food. That's take right. the fucking guns. Hide guns in the villages. Hide weapons. Yes. Hide soldiers. So then during the day they'd come back, and they'd just keep getting supplies, and they'd yeah. do raids from the villages mm-hmm. with the weapon the French gave them. Yeah. And then so the French would come back and be like, "We know you're harboring communists." Oh, geez. And they would burn the fucking village down. Yeah. And then we did that. We did the and exact did same thing. thing. And then the, under the thing of like, we don't want communism to spread, which is funny to be like, we don't want com- You want to be free, guys. So trust me. And you're like burning yeah. villages down. Like, trust me. This is bad. Well, it, and I think we did the good. same thing kind of in Afghanistan, right? Mm-hmm. In Iraq. Where Stealing would be democracy. Like, We're going to give you guys money, work with us. And then the Taliban comes in at night mm-hmm. and is like, puts a gun to their head and is like, well, you work with us. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's the whole problem with everything, right? Yeah. If you go to, some you know 
if the cops go to a neighborhood bar, the only analogy I ever use and everything is a neighborhood bar. And um, but if they go to a neighborhood bar and go, listen, we want you, we we want you guys to do a couple of troublemakers in here, and the troublemakers are in there. Or they're yeah, outside yeah, yeah. waiting for these guys to leave. Yeah. They're not there. They're only gonna be there part. They know you're going yeah. leave. You're not there to stay forever. So yeah. it always ends up screwing you, you know? Yeah, and if if we don't kill them at night, they're gonna come get beheaded. Well, isn't that what Vietnam? happened in Vietnam? I yeah. mean, once they took over, exactly. They they came by all that stuff. They just destroyed. They yeah. genocide got rid of everybody that bugged them. Anything. Everybody with a pair of glasses. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, it's like they. How'd you get those? They <laughs> literally went. Well, just anybody who's so sort yeah, of yeah, yeah. fancy themselves intellectual. It was like they. It's like the army came in and literally just rampaged through Bushwick, Williamsburg, and Greenpoint. In the past three years, nice. And just, I get it. Here I was, get it. Everybody here has been to a show at a bookstore. Just line up, yeah, yeah. burn the bookstores. Yeah, yeah. It's. Uh, I mean, that's the thing about. That's why I never really got into Vietnam. You know, I like the Civil War and World War Two, where it's like, yeah, it's kind of noble, right? It seems and then, like, yeah. and then Vietnam is the first one that's like. Well, it's so, but even Korea was like a harbinger. It's all like Korea, so psychological. Yeah. And my another uncle who fought in World War II and fought with Audie Murphy. Do you know who Audie Murphy was? No, who's that? He's a famous, he's the most famous World War II hero. Okay. Like he, they made him a movie star. He wasn't a good actor, but he was this legendary World War II. My uncle happened to be in his unit. Oh, wow. And he said that all the hype, to show you the difference in the war, all the hype about him was was true. He goes, this guy was the bravest. He goes, he was so crazy. He'd run right into battle. Yeah. They were at Anzio. They were at Battle of the Ball. All these places. He goes, he would just run right into battle. <laughs> He's nuts. <laughs> and, and and in those days, they'd celebrate now. Like, man, nah, that's a hero. Even, even uh, you know, any movie about Iraq, there's still an undertone of darkness. All the World War II movies, they're like, hey, there's no problem here. Yeah. yeah. Kick their ass. Yeah, yeah, like this guy's funny. great. You know, it had like a positive <laughs> like John, tone to John it. John Basalone. You know, What's that? that? He was a he was in the Pacific. There's a rest stop in New Jersey, like one of the first rest stops. That's what he got out of it. Oh. He got the Medal of Honor. He was he. That's awesome. It's in the Pacific, and the sh like he goes wild, picks up his gun without the fucking heat pad, just mows down the jet, and then he goes home. So they put him on a USO tour. Yeah. To send bonds yeah. and he's like no i need to go back and fight yeah so then he goes to iwo jima and is like i'm gonna do that gun thing again what and he died oh no yeah he Bust died. Out the trick. but he got yeah yeah boy he, like, he was he does a side trace yeah 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 but my mom's got did three up. tours of vietnam he he really? did one and he's like send me back and did another Whoa. and he's like give me one more who did it? My mom's cousin. Wow, he did three he fought, tours. He did two more. He fought, three. Wow. He was because he was like, "Fuck, I'm going back. I'm gonna do." I'm and gonna what did he in. end up doing after the war? Uh, I saw him like spazzing, fighting an arcade owner at the boardwalk one time. <laughs> 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 that was Charlie. He's a good man. He's a good that was man. Charlie, dude. Dude, he was. But that's the whole point. Yeah, he was with my mom the one time when they were younger, and he was sleeping in the car, and some guy like screamed something at my mom, and he like popped up and was just got out and beat the shit out. They were in traffic on the highway. Yeah, he beat the guy and throw him on the side of the road. And he's like, "Come on, let's go." Imagine that guy. He's, he sees a woman in a car. He's like, "Fuck!" The guy sits guy up. Pops up. <laughs> yeah, dude, just pops that's up. A Vietnam, fresh Vietnam from three <laughs> tours. Yeah, I think it was like seventy four. Just pops up. Like what? Can you imagine three tours? I mean, that's a real. That's a. I mean, two tours is crazy, but at least you feel like during the second tour, the guy's like, "What did I say yes to this?" Yeah. But if you go for three, that means you're like in all the way. Yeah. That's when I told the guy, the dude I was talking to, it was actually is my ex father in law. I was talking to him. I was telling him about my mom's cousin. He's like, "Oh, that guy just likes killing people." Yeah. And I was yeah. like, eh, maybe. I mean, he probably just. Uh, there's also the guy. Everyone's got their thing. You go there. You're like, <laughs> you go there, and then you go home, and you're like, I can't be home mm -mm. after. Yeah. You're just in the fucking jungle. Yeah. Killing yes. people. Now you got to go pretend to be a human. Yep. Yeah. So like yeah. when you get off the road for a long time. Yeah. Say it happens to cops. Really <laughs> it happens <laughs> to cops to a lesser degree. With a friend. What's that? Yeah. It happens to cops too. Yes. They, get, they get addicted to that adrenalized state and they go home. They're like, this sucks. Sure. And they stay there forever. And uh, But the other thing with Vietnam, which I've watched a lot of those uh, YouTube guys where they interview and you see the similarities in them eventually. And one of them is that they said they got screwed. First of all, just imagine this. Supposed to be the country sending all this money for aid. They One guy was, several of them said, the sea rations were terrible. He goes, mm -hmm. we looked at the date on some of them. They were Korean in World War II. Yikes. That's how old the sea rations yeah. were. Jesus. That they given to the troops at supposedly the richest time in our history. And the other one is the M14. They said the M16 got more guys killed when they switched to the M16 because Westmoreland wanted... 
or one of these guys just it was like a vanity project the m14 wouldn't jam in the mud the oh, m16s that, yeah. jammed and they said guys would just be getting killed bayoneted to death oh, because it would Christ. jam and you couldn't unjam it oh. the, the the m14 was the early gun was better it sucks yeah america really fucked up i don't like it but yeah the whole thing just the whole thing was bumps just, me out yeah and then each president had an opportunity to end it yeah, that's right. And they all just keep dragging it out. But that's what I mean. That's what I'm saying about that yeah. state. Kennedy. Yeah, he was the, close to ending it. He was, he was yeah, but yeah. he wasn't. Well, he, they, you know they I mean? made like, sure he didn't. And they said, and this guy Van was talking to Henry Cobb at Lodge, who was the ambassador. Clo all the guys were close to Kennedy. And it was just one of those things where it's like, just at the last minute, it's like any other decision you've seen in any power person, where you're like, everybody has this logical argument, and then they go, Ah, no, I think this is better. Yeah. And you're like, what? Why? You don't even give us a reason. And he never gave us a reason. It was. Uh, was there any kind of economic advantage that like was clear? I don't think so. Really? They didn't I don't even think like there make was any. any yeah, I don't there was know. nothing really there. I mean, there was babes, rubber. Babes. No, there was rubber. All the shit that was there was gone when we left. True, true. Yeah. Rubber, coconuts, all the rice. It was all gone. I mean, we killed it. Damn, that sucks. I mean, Agent Orange. I mean, when you think about it, yeah, I forgot about it, that. Agent Orange. Killing all the people. They said their their levels of whatever diox diox yeah. were three times anybody else by the time we left, and all the troops. I mean, doing his own troops is just crazy. I mean, that's the height of like uh, immorality, you know. To just yeah, the guys that are there fighting, and you're just yeah. like, yeah, well, you know, it's like no, no. The other ones you have to really try to be a little more careful with the opposite of what you're doing. It was really a weird situation, you know. Also, the French were using napalm too. They were before us. Yeah, they were. They were. We did everything they did. Sounds like a French the word. Exact Napalm. same thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know what that is? Yeah, that just is it, was gel. It? Yeah, <laughs> is it like petroleum gel, yeah. and they light it on fire, and you yeah. spread it if you like touch it. You, you, you don't have to it. light yes. on fire; it just goes on your body. It burns. Yeesh. And water makes it worse, right? Because if you take yes, grease fire, put water right. on it, gets worse. It stinks. And it, I mean, but France really wanted Vietnam, so well, they, they had it. it before that. Yeah, they wanted it back. Must I mean? They had it. They lost it. They're like, I think we can get this back. They want their baby back. So but spread what some is, fire on people. Yeah. What is <laughs> it about Vietnam? That's so because we apparently wanted it too. We went in there in the mid fifties and we couldn't leave. You ever go to a party and you're like, I gotta leave. This party's over. Oh yeah. And it's like, <laughs> it's like you know, yeah. You I guess I will up. do some coke. <laughs> <laughs> you're saying it was I guess I will. It was two a.m. You end up going. I've only had left at eleven o'clock, like I planned to. That's Vietnam. <laughs> it's probably just a psychological thing. It's like you want to be the best general. You start losing. You're like, got yeah. this. We got this. And it's like, no, no, no. We should have this. Hear me out. This is my passion project. Yeah. This is my well, baby. Yeah. I mean, that's the other thing. Everybody was just about. You know, the military, like their job is to get more money for the military. Mm -hmm. How can you get more money if you're not in a war? Sure. So how did, what, what, what do you like? How does this thing progress? What do you, yeah. how does it end? What, what's going on? Vietnam? Yeah. I mean, it, look, it ended when we left. It was the most, it was really, they're lucky it was the mid seventies. It was like 75, that famous rooftop yeah, Saigon, thing. Saigon, yeah. They're lucky because by then everybody was, just, it was like the age of apathy when I was a teenager. People were just into drugs, you know, dancing. And, you know, it was just a very uh, hedonistic time. People were done. All the protesting that happened in the 60s, people were done by the 70s. You know what I mean? And they're just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so when people left, it wasn't even, there wasn't even outrage. It was like, oh, that was, that was awkward. That was know? a bomber. <laughs> that was Damn. just, yeah. People were just like, whoa. Yeah, just, coke just and disco, so yeah. And, and you feel so bad for all the it. people that, uh, you know, yeah, all the Vietnamese that was still helping us by the end were fucked. Yeah. Like that, that they famous, got killed. that helicopter on the roof, the helicopter on the that roof. picture, that's a long line. Yeah. And that's the last chopper. That's right. Those last boys are staying and that's, that's, that's right. a negative time. Yeah. Oh yeah. When that chopper yeah. takes off and you're like next in line. I, I've had, that, I've had a five similar minutes experience. Earlier. I was at Longwood Gardens waiting for a shuttle to like go see the shuttles. Like I was <laughs> Damn, like the last guy. guy. <laughs> I had to wait like 15 more minutes. I was like, yeah. I, I don't know what happened. It settled down. It's better now. No, it's not. It's, 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 it's not tearing. The damage is done. I mean, that's so, the thing. You, the power shift immediately. Yeah. And all the people, like, when you think about the people right now in your life, that you were like, ah, fuck you. And then if suddenly they're in power, they go, where is this son of a bitch? Doria, where does he live again? Yeah. And then, you know, you just hope they, you know, well, accidentally mistake you for Mike Feeney and kill him. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, but what's it like? So you had you grew up watching Vietnam, and yeah. then what was it like for you to see like the Iraq War and all? Is that the older I get, the more no, I'm like I, I believed, saw this before. I believed that we that there were weapons of mass destruction. They got you too. They got me. I believed it all the way. I said, "There's got to be weapons of mass destruction. It wouldn't be this, you know. They wouldn't be going to this extreme after Vietnam. Yeah, they wouldn't be. If the, it wasn't true, oh, they're not going to be fooled twice. Wouldn't be this diabolical. I said they can't be that stupid, you know, or diabolical. Either way, I said there's no way there's not weapons of mass destruction. It wasn't. I mean, I was a kid. Me, me and the Senate believed this. Yeah, you and <laughs> Hillary Clinton. All of us. Yeah. <laughs> I was. Only a few didn't. I was a kid, and it was 2003. Yeah. So I was fresh off 9-11. I yeah, was a yeah. Fuck, I was an eighth grade patron. I had a bone dude. to pay. Yeah. Oh, I was pretty yeah. much a troop. At yeah, this they part. had you. They had you. Four years later, I'd be going to West Point. Yeah, they had you. I was ready. Yeah. Yeah. They Vietnam, my seat up. Iraq, I was pumped. I was yeah. watching. The, you remember when the, you I like the fact the news. that he thinks you get into West Point. You know, that's a hard school to get into. I got it. He was in. You did? Yeah. yeah. Wow. I'm I very went. impressed. You did? Yeah. Well, I quit right away, but I went. Oh, that's, a, that's impressive. Yeah. What do you have to get on your fan SATs to get into a place like that? I played football. That helped. Oh. Yeah. They got me in for that. Yeah, I got like an eleven something on my SATs. Yeah, nothing. It's okay. I, yeah, it's a it's little better than me, but it's not that good. little above average. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. Like a, that's potential eleven. I got ten thirty. Yeah. I was eleven hundred for football. That's a fucking sixteen hundred. Yeah.